Dear students, welcome to week 9 of the course. Through this brief presentation, I will be providing an overview of the assignments for this week, and I will also be going over the main concepts of the readings for this week. This week, I will be providing feedback on the visit plan and family interview questions. Again, as I uh, mentioned, I will be aiming to submit the feedback to you by Thursday night. Um, therefore, you should schedule your visit and interview with the family anytime between March 22nd and April 21st so that you have enough time to work on your assignment. Third, you will be um, working on a, a weekly discussion similar to other weeks. And um, the concepts for this week are, um, it focuses on family systems theory. And I will be discussing family systems theory in the next slide. You should also sign up for the Zoom live session, which will be taking place on April 11th. And um, just as a reminder, next week um, you have a spring break between March 25th and March 31st, so you will not have to submit any assignments next week. So the definition of family systems theory. Um, according to family systems theory, family is an organized group in which all the members are interdependent, influencing the functioning of the family system. So, for example, if um, you have a mother who's um, very stressed because of uh, different um, work-related situations, she may bring that stress to the home which may influence her interaction with her kids and which in turn the kids may manifest um, their reaction through different behavioral problems at school. Um, so that's what this um, theory discusses that um, the behavior of one individual influences the behavior or functioning of other family members. So again, if um, as we discussed with ecological systems theory, if there is a situation affecting one of the mem family members and one of the ecological systems, that will affect other family members within the family system. And um, let me provide you with another example of uh, my own work on how this may apply to immigrant families because that has been my focus both through practice and research. I have worked um, serving immigrant families throughout the years. So, um, there are different stressors that affect immigrants, including um, having to learn a new language, adapting to a new culture, having to separate from family, and experiencing discrimination and marginalization. And for undocumented immigrants in particular, there is some added psychological distress because they experience trauma um, while crossing the border they lack legal protections and they're in constant fear of being deported. And they also have limited resources because they're not eligible for many of the social services and programs provided by the government. So why I wanted to provide this example is because uh, many times we believe that the situation may only affect the parents who are undocumented. But research has shown that um, the parents' undocumented status does not only affect themselves, but it affects the entire family, including the children's developmental uh, development and well-being. And um, 
it may affect the children through different ways. So one of them would be that um, undocumented parents may have a reduced income or working conditions, debilitated housing, and poor access to social services and to community supports. Um, while I lived in Indiana a few years back ago, I participated in a research study in which we interviewed immigrant families, both um, those who came to the U.S. Um, legally and those who came um, without documents. And we found out that those who were undocumented they were less likely to access um, social services and community programs because they were afraid that um, that they would be asked for different documents and that those um, organizations would find out that they were undocumented and they could potentially be deported. And specifically those services that are from the government, including Medicaid and food stamps, even though the children qualified because they are U.S. citizens, the parents were less likely to access those programs um, because they had to provide personal information, which may reveal their status. And it also affected the family in other ways. For example, again, um, if the parents were constantly worried about being deported, if um, they were hesitant about driving um, because they didn't have a driver's license, they were less likely to take their kids or to enroll them in different extracurricular activities in the school. Um, and um, also that stress that they felt um, reflected in their um, interactions with their children. So again, this is an example of how for ex uh, the parents' undocumented status and the anti-immigrant sentiment um, and other realities that they experience at different uh, levels, um, it impacts the relationship they have in their families and also the children's uh, development and well-being. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I hope you have a great week. And um, like, ha like I have said before, please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions.